and welcome everyone. Welcome to day two of the 2021 U.S. Junior Chess Congress. My name is Abel Talamantes, uh, Chess Director at the Mechanics Institute, and uh, joining me uh, for the broadcast today is three-time U.S. Champion Grandmaster Nick DeFermian and FIDE Master Paul Whitehead. Uh, we're the Mechanics Institute and Chess Weekend uh, with Glenn Panner and Merritt Thorpe and company. Uh, we're jointly running the U.S. Junior Chess Congress. And uh, yesterday we had a full day of chess with the uh, age six and under, eight and under, and 10 and under sections finishing their one day event. And then our championship section, the 16 and 18 and under uh, finished uh, half of their event. They played three rounds yesterday and then they finish off today with the uh, last three rounds, the, the championship rounds. Uh, but today we have two more one day sections, the uh, 12 and under and the 14 and under. Um, and before we get to the top board in the 12 and under section, how are you guys feeling this morning? Bright eyed and bushy tail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, because it's a national event uh, uh, for those of us in uh, San Francisco, uh, it's a little earlier than what we're used to, but uh, we're so excited that uh, we, we're full of energy and ready to uh, tackle the events of the day. And uh, starting with the board you are looking at right now, this is the top board in the 12 and under section. Uh, this is, uh, uh, because the name is long, it's cut off. It's, uh, but, uh, I believe it's uh, Vedant Chabukswar who's playing white rated 1093 is playing the top seed in this section, Jonathan Chen, King LOL, <laughs> one, two, three, four, rated 2228. My so, God, wow. Is it possible that like this kid couldn't play on Saturday, which is why he's playing today? No, I mean, most of the players uh, in the 12 and under, you know, are, are, you know, 11 years old, 12 years old. So that's why they're playing. But it is entirely possible that this section could have players that are even younger than 10, uh, like nine years old, eight years old, seven year old, if they wanted to play again. And I'm curious how many players we have will like that. But uh, anyone that played yesterday because of their age, uh, they would be young enough to qualify to play today. And I do believe that we have some players uh, like that. Oh, right, and, but we we also have like a 2200 player who might have um, played in the championship section. Well, they but they wouldn't be able to play because they're playing today. Though. Right, uh, right. Or yeah, I get that. Yeah, actually, if they, if they were to, <laughs> if they were to play both simultaneously, uh, I'm imagining U.S. Chess would be calling and saying, "Hey, how are you guys doing that?" <laughs> <laughs> right. Playing the one day and the two day simultaneously. I'm surprised you don't have at least one person trying that. It's something like Walter Brown would have done or something. Yeah. Or pretty, it, well, I think the online platforms uh, prevent uh, two games from simultaneously happening, though I've heard stories of people running to different rooms to, you know, play in you know, two events simultaneously at the, in the same location. Uh, it yeah, it's been done in live chess. <laughs> You know, it, it requires uh, a good health <laughs> to be able to sprint across. Um, but uh, so wh what do you think here from this game? Uh, black is the master. Uh, white is the contender. But uh, how are the contenders holding? You know, the first couple of rounds are tough in these sections because, uh, um, you know, there's some mismatches on paper. But uh, as we saw yesterday, there's a lot of opportunity for... Uh, uh, upsets and surprises and um, there was a lot of uh, strong players that were dodging bullets because uh, they came close uh, to being caught by one of these uh, opponents looking for uh, that big upset uh, but we did see a few upsets what do you think in this game could this be one of them no <laughs> now it looks like is losing the exchange or blacks winning the exchange yeah, not good. I was wondering about knight c4. Does that is that possible? Knight takes d3. 
knight b6. Oh, okay. <clears throat> wow. Hey, let, let me move to uh, uh, board two in this. I guess black can just play queen d8. Now knight c4, knight d3, knight b6, rook takes c1. And then queen takes c1? Knight takes c1. Oh, yeah. And yeah. you're a piece ahead. Yeah, yeah. I thought my queen c1 was tricky, but... That was a great try, though. <laughs> and uh, check out, this is board two in the 12 and under section. Uh, white is Carlos Varela, uh, rated 2016, uh, playing Ishan Banerjee, who's rated 1084. Well, Black played C5 check without hardly thinking. So <laughs> really, I wonder about that. Probably. And uh, just looking, the time control for these, uh, these one day sections today is game in 25 plus five. So just to give you a sense of where the time is at. I think E5 just wins here probably, right, Nick? <clears throat> Let'll run black out of oh, moves. Looks, yeah, that's that's these king and pawn endings are tricky, and I didn't like black's moves c5. Yeah, that just kind of gave him might have given the game away. Instead of c5, I, I, what did you what do you think? Just or actually, let's let's go back a little bit. I mean, the bishops were on the board apparently. Uh, White had played that. I guess uh, take take had to be maybe played. pawn f six and just and just uh, what's White gonna do to win the game? Maybe. Yeah, it's still it's still good for White, but it would have made the breakthrough a lot harder. And uh, yeah, this is uh, where we're at. C five just is 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 a lemon, I think. It's kind of surprising uh, we're at this point with the uh, players with a uh, thousand point rating difference. But maybe not if uh, if White knew was going into a one end game. Oh, White's got the big rating advantage, so. Yeah. And you expect the experience advantage too, right? In, in terms of. If positions like this look even, it's going to be easier for the uh, the stronger player to not make a mistake. It looks like White can play pawn e5 and then just sort of infl maybe infiltrate on the king's side. Yeah, it's um. Black is going to run out of moves, but to prevent that, if yeah, pawn to e5, pawn to d5, then. On to B4, and you're going to set up a Zugzwang. Yeah, I mean, white has plenty of extra moves. And uh, black played the response pretty quick here. Yeah, well, he's just going to lose the D5 pawn. Yeah. So. Yeah, but, and... Uh, you know what what I've been quite impressed with like playing over these games is how some of the players they know the methods of of um you know the techniques involved in winning a game like you know exchanging pieces when you're ahead and all that kind of stuff that I'm trying to drum into my 60 70 year old <laughs> students you know over and over and over again, these kids just get it right away. And uh, jumping to board four in the uh, 12 and under section here, this is uh, Darren Goktepi, DG Wizard, rated 1958, playing white against Vidyuth Harish, rated 1059 as black. <clears throat> well, this is very unclear. And uh, Black taking the opportunity, uh, apparently 
taken a lot of time in, th in thinking of his moves to get to this position. I think Black is going to miss his light squared bishop a little bit. Yeah. And that, it, you know, so, you know, if the light squared bishop's on the board, Black would probably be even thinking of playing f6 or something, but at some point, but he's not going to want to do that with. The, he's with, probably got to break f6 anyway. It's, or he'll just hang out and say, well, White, how, where are you going to come get me? Are you going to come get me on the queen side? Which probably is the case, but the white king is over there. Yeah, probably that's what white should do. I mean, because if white would like to play f5 without having to play f4 first. Well, that'd be a good move. That's, <laughs> that's the move we're going to try to make, Abel, here. Pawn to f5. Pawn to f5. Without playing pawn to f4. Trying to sneak it in. Just uh, uh, slowly but surely, yeah. Oh, Black would be so happy to rip off the pawn on f4, or open that long diagonal. I oh, know. White's doing a good job for the queen side play. Do you uh, just shove a4 here? You probably need to go slowly. You're probably going to have to do a3, b4, c5. Um, and if I were black, I'd just hang out a while and then maybe break with f6 at some point where maybe if the white king is trying to get back to the uh, king side. Yeah, I mean... Black is missing his white squared bishop more than white's m missing the extra knight. Oh, a4 was a bad move by black. Yeah. Is that he just speak? Yeah. Go ahead. Should have just done nothing. Is that because uh, white basically just locks it up? And well, white can play c5 easily now. Black could have had potential of opening the A file or, or just waiting to see white play A3, B4, takes white. White was able to play B4 free of charge without having to work for it. Yeah, and all of a sudden Black's pieces look pretty uh, defensive and not active. Well, I mean, you know, this is interesting because there's always this, you know, way of playing that's impatient, you know, desiring activity. Like now Black wants to play C6. And who's to say that, you know, maybe this is not like some crazy idea to turn it around tactically or something, you know. And the, the additional problem for Black is uh, the time, two, under three minutes. So we'll keep an eye on this game, but uh, let's uh, move over to the uh, 14 and under section and uh, take a look <clears throat> at the top seed there. That is this game with uh, Crazy Hill Check. That's Hirsch Singh. Rated 22.53, playing white against Matthew Zhu, uh, 13.01 rated. <laughs> that is a rating difference. That is a rating difference. And, you know, and, and I hope these kids that are uh, un underrated here uh, enjoy the experience because I, I know it can't be that many tournaments where, uh, because it's an age level tournament, this will happen, where you get an opportunity to play a master. You know, 1300. Oh, there's an exchange sacrifice. Yeah, Black's doing the right thing by giving up the exchange for a pawn. Better than giving up the C pawn, yeah. 
Yeah, that's an interesting um, uh, thought too. You know, sometimes, you know, when you have to give up material over and over and over again, I see players making the wrong decision in that respect. Now, you know, is there any uh, complications that Black will be able to throw in with that uh, the bishop on b7 and that long diagonal? Well, how about d4? You know, he'd love to play d4, but White's trying to stop it. Yeah. What about like Queen uh, h5 here? Looks, yeah, d4 right away doesn't look like it's going to work. Queen d4, Queen h5, Rook c7 or something like that would be horrible. Yeah, you can't let white break through too quickly with rook d7, so maybe you need to go defensive with queen d6. He traded queens. Oh, no. And that, that was bad, right? Because uh, you sort of need that queen to create fight. Hard to well, checkmate without the queen. Yeah. And Black is going to try to hold this, and that's, you know... That's and sort of this is what I uh, said. Uh, I said yesterday too is that for underrated players, it's, it's actually very tempting for them to want to trade. Uh, you know, this is actually not a, a completely terrible. Well, I guess it is. Knight b three. Knight. Yeah. This is. Yeah. Yeah. Not good. And uh, in the in this same section, uh, fourteen and under section, uh, we're taking a look here at a player that regularly uh, plays the Tuesday night marathon. This is uh, da <laughs> Daniel Lynn, smiley face, four. Well, he's doing great here. The hey. knight is just dancing all over the place and is about to win the sea pawn. He's rated uh, 2027 playing uh, the Sari Ravi, who is 1292. Black hasn't lost a pawn yet, which is remarkable here. Uh, isn't Black down three pawns? Or white? Oh, Black hasn't lost a pawn. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, Black bought one pawn. Yeah, likes the pawns. Yeah, this is not, this is, this is over. And another game that has ended in this section is uh, Nitish Nathan, Breathe Chess Always, who has also played uh, at the Mechanics Institute and is from uh, Northern California. Got this win in the first round here against Leo Shi, who is 1261 rated, Nitish being 1941. Just went all out attack here. And yeah, just, just got in there, and then that was the game. So, nice win by Natish in the 14 and under section. Uh, the top board in the 12 and under section uh, uh, got the win. Let me just verify that that was, yeah. King LOL gets the win and the mate on the board. And uh, also in the 14 and under section, Or just the 12 and under section. Well, we have Andrew Ballantyne. This 14 and under section. Andrew Ballantyne playing black. 1227 against Lily Deng, who's 1844. Oh, Bishop H4 is a is a nice move. I think. I mean, it, it weakens that F6 square. And uh it's gonna relieve. Oh no, because he could. He has to play g5 here, right? Or he will be relieved of material. I think so, but then, then what? Well, then knight h6 and bishop g5. I mean, or or something else. <laughs> 
Yeah, just a very harsh move. Yeah, Bishop H4 is a killer move. And welcome everyone in the broadcast. It's uh, probably some of the kids whose uh, games have ended. So thanks for hanging out with us. It's a funny little move there, but it seems to just win the game. And uh, another game in this section is, uh, this is Jaden. Jaden Zhu, Piano Jaden, 1773, playing Bohan Zhang, who is rated 1166. But uh, black looks like they're up upon. And actually, Jaden's down to a minute 34. What is going on here? I'm wondering if Jaden uh, came late because that's a pretty, uh, pretty big uh, gap in time. It's not an easy position, but looks like black is up a solid pawn. Yeah, white's got a you know nice bishop if that knight. Could you know, kick the knight on uh, b6, maybe bring the other knight to e3, yeah. f1, e3, d5. This is true. But a minute, 20 seconds, what yeah. happened with? You Jayden? know, and with Jaden, uh, you know, we have in the chat lightning speed saying they use a lot of time, but, uh, you know, Jaden is the higher rated player here, so it would be surprising that he would use so much time to get to this uh, position, but uh, never sometimes, know. Sometimes it's just hard to think, you know, and you you sit there and your mind goes blank and... Under a minute, my God. Yeah, there... He could be having, um, what do they call it? Connection issues. And that, oh, yeah. that could be, although I see the, the bars look pretty solid. But let's uh, let's see how it goes. Um, fortunately, he's got a five-second increment rather than... Uh, this doesn't look like it came from a French defense. This was from a Benoni. Somebody was asking. Yeah, this is out of a Benoni. Oh, he needs to relocate that knight. Just... Knight F1, um... E3. Yeah. Now, now, here's the challenge for the... A6, uh, what a strange move. For Bohan is, uh, and we've said this before on other broadcasts, that, you know, when, when you have a player that is running out of time and playing fast, not to get carried away and let that player carry you to playing fast because i think the temptation is when somebody's blitz blitzing out moves that you have to react accordingly bohan's got 16 minutes left i mean they could take a lot of time to try to, try to find the best move but he's he seems like he's reacting this this will be interesting see if he can hold it together Although that looks like a pretty good move right there. Black is playing some bad moves. It started to play some bad moves. I mean, a6 and rookie seven, I don't think either of those moves were good. Black has could maybe should have played. Now, now what was the, oh, I, I guess, oh, is, yeah. I guess to put the rook on uh, the knight on uh, D, D4, yeah. Oh, and this so. is played way too quickly. A knight F3 check, all this. Does it work? No. Probably, probably not. No, I don't think so. Think well, that, that loses. Uh, yeah, King H1. H1. Yeah, you're losing the exchange. No, and Black is my, not thinking here. 16 minutes, and he immediately did knight F3. Just as what? Abel said, he, you know, was he going to play fast? Wait a minute now. Oh, my Rook gosh. E4? Rook takes E4. And if, oh, why does he take with the queen? He threatened rookie one check after rookie four. It, like he's play, he, Black is playing solely to uh, flag the opponent. And playing, that's a completely bad strategy. Not playing chess. Yeah. A rook down now. Unbelievable. 
this is not the way to play. You play, yeah. But still, 12 seconds left. He's threatening yeah, a rook check takes on e four was a good, Rook takes e4 would have been a shot. Oh, look if at that. Takes f3, rook e1 check, wins the queen. Look at that move. Oh, why did he trade queens? Ah. Uh, what a move. Ah, uh, you can resign this no matter of what time. Oh, what a what a turnaround. It's sad to see. Yeah, this is unfortunate. Black got carried too fast. Because he felt he was winning due to the time. Yeah, the time is just a, a very, you know, doesn't have much and 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 I think uh you know, I, I think these players, they start looking at the clock more than uh, the game itself, right? And the other thing, I think they're misjudging that five second increment is a lot of time actually. Uh, you know, be, all it takes is for a player to move back and forth a couple moves and, you know, D25 plus five is the uh, time control, but uh, Black definitely let this one get away. Let's uh, go back and check on Andrew Ballantyne because uh, this game is certainly over. Lily Deng, who is white, seems to have this game in control. We're still- Oh, I have to, have to root for Andrew for because he plays in all our tournaments. <laughs> and- uh, well, yeah. Black lost a piece, which is not surprising. Yep, yeah, this is still in the age 14 and under section. This is completely hopeless, unless there's some bad mistake made. And uh, let's check this game out. This is, uh, we haven't looked at this one yet. This is... Uh, Nutmeg on a five, not so good. Maybe we're looking at Nutmeg Pro here, who is uh, is it the twelve and under? Yeah, this He's, is this is the twelve and under section. Nutmeg Pro David Liu is nineteen seventy, rated against Dia Balamurali, who is ten thirty seven. White is ten thirty seven rated. Whoa. Well, white is white is not doing well down a piece, but piece for two pawns. It's, yeah, I don't know if it was a blunder or one of those standard kind of Sicilian sacrifices that didn't quite pan out. And this uh, it says it originated out of the French. And the, the E6 pawn is still there. It so, has similarities to positions that arise out of Sicilians as well. Yeah, I'm gonna... Actually, it would be it would be a fun um, uh, thing to set up some middle game positions and then say guess the opening. You uh -huh. know? That could be like uh, you know how like uh, in wine tasting you you do the blind test. <laughs> and you try to try to guess what uh, what you're drinking. Uh, you set up a, a middle game and say you got to take the blind test. What was the opening? Yeah. Oh wow! Let me. Uh... And you deliberately make them, you know, these ridiculous positions that that <laughs> that sort of went off yeah. the rails a little bit. It went off the rails, but were actually played in some grandmaster game or something. Oh. Now, white can make it a little difficult for black by just playing as solidly as possible, but this, this has got to be inevitable win for black. Yeah, rook a8 is going to cause more damage. So. All right, let me, uh, let me find some other games in uh, the 12 and under section. Uh, let me. 
click through to see what games are still kicking around. Because I'm looking at the results, so uh, I'm gonna look at games where the result is not yet there. Oh, that game is finished. Back to this game while I uh, pull up games. You know, I always like that Larry Evans um, uh, column, you know, guess the best move, and then there's three choices given, you know? One is utterly ridiculous, right? Like it hangs your queen. I remember <laughs> that column. Do you know? What? I remember that column. Yeah. And they were from Reader's Games, I think, as well, or something like that. So they were, they were. <laughs> Nobody's done that sort of column in a while. And uh, here we have a game from the uh, 12 and under. This is Akshaj Chala playing white, rated 1021, uh, playing Anjanea Rao, Night Owl Calculator, rated 1907. Oh, this, this game has a lot of action in it. Somebody's asking us why are high level players playing against much lower rated players? Um, that's that's a great uh, question. And the reason for that is uh, because of the uniqueness of this event in that the sections are by age level. So while by far most of the tournaments uh, around the country, chess tournaments, uh, you have uh, players separated by rating sections by skill level. Uh, when you have a tournament like this that's by age level, you could have a 2200 rated player that is age 10 years old uh, playing with a 500 rated player because they're 10 years old. Um, so the U.S. Junior Chess Congress, um, because it is by age level, that's why you have that. But this is also why in our prizes we do have some underprizes. Uh, as as part of it and it's uh, also the nature of a swiss system right in the first round you you know the higher much right. higher players and, are playing lower that, rated players and that's the other thing is that even if you get all the the players together uh the swiss pairings you're gonna have a, a higher or the lower and the way it works is the higher you know uh, faces the middle of the bracket but even the middle of the bracket is a lot of times significantly lower but the real reason is that we want to see a lot of blood flow. <laughs> you just want to see just carnage. You want to see some massacres <laughs> occur. And I'm looking on the event page uh, because we were conscious of the fact that uh, we're going to have sections with some pretty strong players uh, that are young. Um, and so that's why when you look at the awards, and I'll just give an example uh, in the 12 and under section, uh, we have awards for the top 10 overall, but we also have awards for the top three under 1,200, the, the top under 1,000, and top three unrated. So we did create some incentive for players that might be a little bit lower rated playing these sections uh, because we thought it would be fair because, you know, we, you know you're know you going to have some strong players. I mean, we got masters in the 12 and under, right? I mean, we had masters uh, master in, in the 10 and under yesterday. Um, you know, and, and that might, you may actually have someone that's like new to chess, right? Um, uh, that is 10 years old in, in learning and then has to play that section. So anyway, so that's the reason it's because of age level tournament. Uh, and, uh, uh, but we do have under prizes, uh, for the kids. And another example, yesterday, the age eight and under, we had top 10 overall, but we also had top three under 800, top three under 600, and top three unrated. So there are some awards for the lower rated within those sections. Wow. Oh, oh, I played a beautiful combination. Oh, we shouldn't have taken the night. No, nicely not done. taken the night. Checkmate in two now. Yeah. Coming up is Queen F seven mate. And this would be uh this would be a huge upset. 
This would be a, a 10-21 beating a 19-07. That is a big upset. Yep. Yep. White played some, yeah. Poof. Oh, for... <laughs> like way, light, way light, underrated. Lightning speed yeah. is pre-move it now. <laughs> Just pre-move Queen F7. Right. Because there's nothing, nothing to do. No. Nope. Well, no, but but wait a minute. If you do, uh, well, I guess it wouldn't work. What if you pre-moved Queen F7, but then Black ends up playing? Uh, uh, resigning. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna resign. Ninety-five. Ninety-five. Uh, here we go. Oh, that's a big yeah. win. <laughs> big win for Akshaj Chala in the uh, twelve and under section. Congratulations. That so, was, yeah, that, I mean, that's pretty sophisticated stuff the White showed there with the knight um, to G4 move. Yes. And, and White uh, gained 500 rating points from that. <laughs> <laughs> just look just at look, points. It, that's what exactly happened. The rating went from um, 1,200 to 1,700. And uh, let's... Chess.com um, rating system. Maybe it's some kind of provisional rating. It, you know, it could have been a new account, too. That, uh, yeah, he just gained 500 rating points. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> and uh, the, the subject of rating points is very near and dear to Paul because he's on a quest to 2300 on uh, chess.com, which he's still looking to achieve. Well, I need to just buckle down and play and, and take it a little bit more seriously. <laughs> and I'm trying to pull up some games, but a lot of, a lot of games are done in this section. I'm trying to update the spreadsheet. I'm going to have to go to the 14 and under section. Because uh, every, every game I'm pulling up, it results to maybe be entered in there. All right, let's go 14 and under. And uh, kids, if you got a friend uh, playing the 14 and under, uh, give me a screen name. Uh, that player cannot be watching the Twitch, but I'll pull that up. But uh, give me a username, and I'll pull that game up. First username in the chat that puts it in there, I'll pull that game up. And it needs to be from the tournament. Rice Chess Master 1. I know Rice Chess Master 1. Now, this better, legendary, this, Nick. This better not be a Blitz game he's playing on the side. So now they're saying, does it have to be live? No, no, no. It has to be live. And his game's over. I know that because I'm not pulling it up. Not finished games, live games. Is Carlson playing? <laughs> not in this tournament. No, live games, live games. So is the candidates tournament starting in a, in a week or something like that, right? Yeah. Right. Just a week from now. Too bad Wesley So's not in it, but. Well, if St. Louis had sponsored it, they could have put in the uh, um, uh, the sponsors one choice out of eight, but the Russians put in Ala Ala Kasenko. Ed. Right. Ooh. And and there is a player playing the uh, twelve and under section, Andrew Zhu. A nice step. Uh, I believe he was one of the uh, uh, one of the winners from yesterday. Green well, line. I can stare at this uh, Queen F7 checkmate for. <laughs> Here we go. Thank you. This is uh, Green Line playing black against uh, Bongo Man twenty four oh six. Seconds left, minute left for green line. 
All right, good. Look All at the this. Starting. <laughs> <laughs> Both players are attacking on the H and G files. The rook <laughs> takes. Oh, I, you know, I think he went the wrong way. Well, he can block the check on the long diagonal. King H8. And what can we do? Queen check, bishop e5, just not enough time. Yeah, close but no cigar. I had to try it with seconds left. Okay, he's he stopped the mate. <laughs> You, don't you just have the feeling that there's going to be one tactical shot that's just going to end it? <laughs> Some yeah, of these black and slow. Oh, Queen F6 is a nice move, I think. Hey, Queen E4. Yeah, of course, black will win if he's careful, but. Uh... Exciting game here. I would have tried maybe Queen. C4, if he just gets on that uh, A2, G8 diagonal in a sneaky way. Ooh. Yeah, I think Abel's right. I think we're going to see something happen. Or getting it's far gonna be, it's, away. It's, it's going to be a shot. One shot that got missed or something. You just feel it. And then seconds left, right? It's like... <laughs> Yes. Oh, good move. Getting those rooks off that diagonal. Yeah, excellent move. That's... White's playing as tricky as possible here. Oh, Bishop D4 looks a bit unpleasant. Uh, he does it. And that, that should do it. Well done. Well done. Green line. Yeah, some excellent moves being played here under pressure. But Black's under pressure too. I mean, they, you know, under. Yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah. You got to see it all. 10 seconds left. Queen F3 is easy. Just, I guess. He didn't do it. That's a good move. Black is black is playing playing carefully. Give it oh didn't want to give a check. Hoping the uh he didn't take that form. I think we're gonna see a series of checks here. Queens right. Ooh. Queen G3. Look at that. You're going to pick up a pawn, no? Threatening mate. Oh, no, but you got to. Oh, check. All right. So, uh, don't go Queen F8, Queen D5, check. Oh, gives the bishop away. Oh, oh wow. Oh. Wow. Oh, okay. He wants to take it with check. It's pretty sneaky. So is uh, is White gonna march the king up to try to mate Black? <laughs> <laughs> well, this is this is no longer now a drawn game. An outside winning chance. Bongo Man declined to draw. <laughs> White declined to draw now. All right, oh, now, that was <laughs> that was sad. Hmm. Ah, a king ending. And that is very tricky for both sides. Shouldn't uh, b5 had been played by white? b5 would have been a good move. There we go. b5 by uh, h5. Oh, not h6, now b5. That's... But now does, well, white, does, does white win now with h a4? Or anything? A anything. Yes. A4 looks like a really good move. 
but that'll do it. Ah, wow. Wow, unbelievable. Unbelievable. What a turnaround. Yeah. And time. <laughs> time factor. <laughs> yeah, time factor. And the uh the yes, there's there's some strange justice in chess. I'm not sure what it is sometimes. It, it's called uh, no justice when uh time is involved. Oh, look at that. Look at that. That's a, that's a nice little... Uh... Oh, he's going to win by uh, cleaning the pawn. Bongo man. Little luck, a little skill, but uh, got it done. Uh, wow, great games. Great start of uh, the round. And uh, wow. the championship section, the 16 and 18 and under, just started. So we'll be able to flip to some games there uh, pretty soon. Uh, let me pull up the list and, uh, we have three rounds in the book and let me, let me pull up, uh, the top boards and we can follow that. And the one day sections in an hour will play their round two. What a, what a way to transition. Why well, could have actually played a night at the end? And then brought the night around. <laughs> and and would have like, had enough, that would have really been something. He would have had enough time to get over there and deliver the check. Yeah. <laughs> With a queen on the board. Yeah. So this is the top board. The game had just started. The time control for the, uh, the, the 16 and 18 and under is G60 plus 5. This is round 4. And the top board, white is Asish Panda. 2038 rated against uh, Kevin Zhu, Penguin Wizard, who is 2108. You know, I used to think these positions were 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 good for black, and now I'm now I think they're they're mostly good for white. I don't know why. Um, what do you think, Nick? These these positions puzzle me sometimes. Rosalimo, Sicilian. Yeah, white white should be a little better. Yeah, I mean, not not too much, but uh, not too much, but a little better. Uh, let me. And someone's asking in the chat, where do you find the awards? Uh, go to our event page, uh, which is right there. Type in the chat. You get all the tournament information. And on um, board two in the uh, 16 and 18 and under, here we have uh, Elijah Samuel Plotnik playing white, rated 2015, against Ryan Chung, passion fruit green tea, 2086. Now that's a brave wow. move, castling on the queen side there. Yeah, it's done a lot in these French. I know. But here, yeah, it's it, the <laughs> the timing's wrong because the a pawn's loose, so there's a bit of trouble. Now, yeah, what can you do? This hurts. Passion fruit green tea, seemingly getting uh, maybe a little advantage here right out of the opening. And uh, on our board three, we have uh, Chloe Gaw, King Hunter 183, taking on the uh, tournament's top seed, Terry Luo 2277. Okay, so this is the uh, championship section. Yeah. Benoni. White's got A3, which doesn't have much to do with anything. But otherwise, it's pretty equal. And then on uh, board four, we have Stunning Garbage. 
women's candidate master Sheena Zhang, uh, who's also a national master, playing white against uh, Ariadne Dodd, 1744. Oh, was this another London system and uh, whites getting control of the dark squares? Yeah, it's got to be a little better for white. Maybe. And that, uh, struc that structure in the middle is, I don't know, sometimes good, sometimes not good. Well, white puts that nine on F3. You've got a clamp on that E5 square. Yeah. Um, your bishop's much better than the than black's light squared bishop. And uh, going down the boards. To, yeah, it's uh, hard for black to play F6 and E5. Two Northern California players. Uh, chess for me, 17, is uh, Adve Bonsol. Playing uh, National Master Sri Ram Krishna Kumar. Well, this is a high level contest. Out of a scotch. You see a lot of scotch in like Blitz and Rapid, but you don't see it too often in a standard game, or do you? Well, it was played in some world championship matches. Or at least one world championship match. Didn't Karpov and Kasparov have some Scotch battles? Oh yeah. Nick, when is the new edition of MCO going to come out? <laughs> well, yeah, it's 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 probably a couple of years from now. <laughs> and okay. for the, for those who don't know, uh, you are looking at. Uh, one of the authors of MCO, uh, Grandmaster Nick DeFermian. If it was good enough for Beth Harmon in the Queen's Gambit, it'll be good enough for you. Yeah, I think Beth Harmon needs a new edition, you know? <laughs> she wants to go to Russia with a new edition of MCO. <laughs> and uh, let's uh, go down the list and uh, check out the... Uh, openings of the games in the top section and we have uh, Sanjeev Anand here playing white 1766 rated against uh, Brijesh Chakrabarti who is 2023 Knight takes F2 yeah that's a nice shot Although Rook F1 might, yeah, might. Black's got a little lead in development here and is trying to make it count. Is B5 the right move? I don't know. Yeah, that's probably good. Knock some things back. You can throw A5 in. At, uh... Knight F2 is meant by Rook F1, maybe. Yeah. And it gets complicated then. Potentially tactical shots about to uh, about to happen here. Now I'm going to guess the opening, Sicilian. <laughs> that is correct. <laughs> that is correct. Accelerated dragon. And uh, going down the list for, uh, here's one player that is uh, just playing out of her mind this tournament. Uh, Leora Ginsburg is white, Pegasus 1015, just playing some strong chess. Uh, playing Ninja Trick, Rohan Rajaram. Oh, this is a tough little game here. Isolated queen pawn looks like a semi tarosh variation. Out equal. And uh, everyone that's uh, following the Twitch, if you want to look up individual games or standings in the section, you can click on that link uh, that I just put in the chat. 
that has all the information on the pairings, the standings, uh, everything that's happening. And while we're on the air, just want to give a big shout out to the amazing uh, tournament directing staff uh, that is working tirelessly, uh, not just to, to pair the games, but to start the games and to monitor the Zoom. Uh, a lot of work and a lot of technical detail goes into it. So kudos to the uh, uh, Chief TD, Glenn Panner, of uh, this tournament, and uh, Dr. Judith Starry uh, from Mechanics, who we know very, very, very well, uh, doing a lot of work behind the scene, and uh, Merritt Thorpe, the National Tournament Director, uh, 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 the chief of the computer, along with uh, John McComsky, and we have an all-star cast of tournament directors uh, uh, monitoring the zooms. You know, Danny Road, Martha Underwood, uh, Sam Shoyket, and just on and on and on. Uh, just a ton of great people making all of this happen. So uh, shout out to them uh, for making it look easy, because <laughs> it's certainly not. All right, let's, uh, wow, let's go back to that game we were looking at earlier with Passion Fruit Green Tea. And you were worried about the uh, castling on the queen side. Yeah, that A pawn is gone. That's... Looks dangerous for white. Yeah, I, I mean, you take on e4, you go pawn to c3 to try to bolster up the queen side. Well, if you take on e4, can't black cut, play queen a1 and queen takes b2? Yeah, no, but nothing's, nothing's very happy. Yeah. You'd go bishop d3 after that. White's messed up a bit here. Yeah, maybe you can go very defensive. Bishop to c4, queen a1 check, knight to b1. It looks terrible, but that black queen is kind of stranded on the a1 square. Well, it can beat a retreat with queen a5. But yeah. Then white could return with knight c3 or something like that. <laughs> and uh, we'll keep an eye on this game. And uh, we'll go and check this one out. <laughs> this is uh, women's candidate master Ashley Pang and white blobby the blobfish. Uh, rated 1963 against Grace Deng, uh, rated 1438. Out of a Gioco. Oh, looks this like Black has done okay here. Yeah, this looks like it could be a game between Carlson and Wesley So or something. <laughs> Now, Jennifer, you could play in this tournament. That's, uh, but I guess, when she you're the did. women's champion, wouldn't bother. <laughs> you know, when you're the, yeah, U.S. women's champion, uh, do you need to be the uh, Junior Chess Congress champion? <laughs> Just add another title. Uh, let's check on uh, Nighthawk. This is uh, Anish Load Nighthawk, 2092 rated as white against... Christopher Daniel von Hoff, Tyreek Hill 10, 1529. Shout out to the Kansas City Chiefs there with uh, that username. F5 just played. This is like another Joko piano or something like that. Yeah, it says Italian game, but yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> I like that strategy. Put the king way in the corner. So yeah, can, this is the black. Is, that yeah, this is an interesting little plan here by Black. <laughs> Must have seen it somewhere to play King H8, Knight G8, and F5. I I, I kind of like it. <laughs> what do you like about it? Well, I mean, white's not that well developed, and it's got a kind of an aggressive look to it. Yeah, King, I think, I mean, in style or something. I think black is looking to unleash her. And this would be great because black just, is the lower rated player. There are issues, of course, like the B7 square. Or, Maybe you have to take that pawn with the rook on f5. And he does. Black looks like they have a. Uh, yeah, this is, this is exciting. It's a good way to play chess. Like trying to win? Trying to, yeah, playing aggressively and, you know, the, the funny thing with the, all these uh, Italian games and Slopez is they're, the, these lightning attacks by black on the king side, I find kind of disconcerting, you know, it makes you, makes you want to go back to the Roy Lopez <laughs> for white. And uh, oh, no. jumping back to the uh, top board here, because uh, white is trying to do things here. So white played bishop d2 to protect c3. Yeah, and black is trying to avoid playing e6 and but white can throw that in if but black is being careful to have his rook on c6 complicated that'll be a nice square there c4 right for uh for black yeah I or mean, that's the trade-off that's the trade-off in these positions for white and uh, everyone that's uh, watching the broadcast if uh, you haven't done so already under white's time you'll see the purple follow button go ahead and click that and follow mechanics chess uh we will be taking a break at around 11 15 ish uh, but we will be back around 12 45 1 um, and then uh, we'll carry the broadcast uh, maybe a, a small break in between, but uh, if you follow us, you get notified when uh, we come back on, and then you can jump on. So click that follow so that uh, if we leave, take a break, uh, you're notified when the broadcast is back, and uh, follow the action of uh, all the rounds. We're, we're going to cover right up to the end, the 12 and under, 14 under, and the uh, 16 and 18 and under. Uh, you'll know all the full tentative final results uh, at the end of the day. So uh, just giving that that plug. All right, let's uh, let's see some game development here. Go back to the passion fruit, green tea. Oh yeah, that was a great. I mean, do you think white is looking to like run to the other side? Well, <laughs> I guess he has to. As Paul had said, just queen a1 check, king v2, take that b pawn so the, you know, white king is uh, out there in the center. Yeah, and, and you could even throw in bishop b4 check after a king g2. I mean, that, that looks puts the white king on e2 where it blocks the bishop. Although that king is, is happy to run, I think, just, you know, go to e2, to f3. And yeah. 
That's true. And participate in the in the attack on the king. Uh, There's some is... amazing games like that, actually. There's a yeah. couple of games. I put it in that King Hunt column that I wrote about a year ago. Well, now, now what happens with uh, Rook D8? Well, Bishop to D3 would, would happen. Ah, uh, Bishop D3, yeah. Well, but yeah, it's got something to say for it too. But I think Bishop B4 check is the looks like the move that really would cause mm -hmm. White the most problems. Yeah, you know what though? After King E2, King F3, Bishop D3, that Bishop's going to be missed on the King side. That's true. And, and, and Knight F6 checks and yeah, and the and King H5, White plays King H5 and. <laughs> at some point. Yeah, Black's careful. It's very good, but yeah, maybe that, it uh, good. what is this? Uh, uh, let me jump to this game real quick because I'm, I'm like, oh, there it goes. Paul's move. Yeah, but I, I can see your point, Nick. Chasing the king to f3. Yeah. This is that uh, game we were following where f5 was played, rook takes. Oh, if I were black, I'd be happy to, to get rid of those active white pieces. Yeah, this has gone okay for black. If this, if, uh, Paul, correct me if I'm wrong. If, if this were a game of go, the white queen would now be off the board, right? It's yes. Completely surrounded. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes. Abel, let's sit and play a couple of games ago. I've been playing a little bit online, so I've, I've sort of get the rules of capture, uh, the zero strategy, but I would love to do that. Give me some uh, pointers. Sure, yeah. And there's, there's an incredible uh, Go library in the chess club now. That's right. It's in the um, Due to a couple of donations. Um, Oh, actually, one significant donation, Richard Laterman's that's donation. Right. I mean, that's a uh, that's a, a, a fantastic English for English speakers. Um, so now, King F three. Yeah, absolutely. Chase the king all the way castle to queen side, and chase it all the way back over to the other side. That king is getting his exercise today. <laughs> getting the cardio, but unwanted, unwanted cardio. Because uh, it's gonna, it's coming at the expense of. Uh, yeah, it's funny upon. after queen, like like you say, Nick. If uh, king f three, queen c two, bishop d three, suddenly whites developed a powerful attack. Yeah, uh, there's going to be some tricks <laughs> in this game. That's... Yeah, just two moves, king f3 and bishop d3, white is ready to, to go. To play knight f6 check or something. Yeah. And uh, as we see this one develop, I want to go back to uh, Stunning Garbage, Sheena Zeng's game, because uh, the rooks on F3, might we potentially see something like rook H3? And then followed by some stunning garbage. <laughs> some, some stunning garbage that ends up not, maybe not being such garbage. Exactly. Yeah, it's a little hard to checkmate black after that G6 move. Is there, uh, is there anyone watching the, the Twitch broadcast now that, because I, I know you're on break, 
uh, for your next round, which starts in 30 minutes. Is there anyone watching that played in yesterday's event in one of the sections? If you did that, uh, we, we want to know. Uh, we're curious, so just say hey in the chat. I know of at least one, uh, a nice step. So, and that, that's a lot of chess, actually. Think about it, that's like 10 rounds of chess. Yeah. Uh, Dreis TV is playing the 16 and 18 and finished the game. Yeah. Slow, cynical quip, Sean Kelly. Oh, you're playing, you're playing today. You uh, 14 and under or 12 and under? He's, uh, hangs around at uh, the mechanics online. 12 and under. All right. So you uh, got to gotta, gotta follow your I'll game. I'll take a look at their game next round. Yeah. And, you know, we have to give some love back to the people that are, like, watching over here. So Inari the Husky and uh, Slow Cynical Quit. <laughs> we're we're going to we're gonna have to check out your games now. Now, the problem with that is that we may be getting uh, – Nari, is that, is that uh, Luke with Jaja? Is that you? If that's you, I will follow the game. Yep, okay. I'll follow your game next round. Now, the, the temptation may be that they're going to do some, you know, crazy exchange sacrifice or, you know, some, you know, pawn storm and <laughs> try to – try to light up the broadcast and uh, we would love that. <laughs> we would love to see that, so. Yeah, yeah. play a great game in art. And entertain us. Wow, look at this game. Uh, the pressure's on. The pressure's <laughs> on. This is uh, King Hunter 183. Oh, D5, nice move. Yeah. Um, Chloe Gaw against Terry Lewell. Ooh, I don't know about that move. Something like Bishop D4 can hurt. Trouble for White here. Let's go back to the... Uh... Advey Bansal, Sri Ram Krishna Kumar game. <clears throat> the kings are still in the middle of the board. How do you feel about that? Yeah, these Scotch games are, are funny that way. <laughs> Bishop A6, so I don't know, maybe you just solidify with B3. Okay, does a developing move. It'd be nice for White to get in this Bishop H3 move at some point. Yeah, Black plays D5, Bishop H3. Queen. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and then the Queen G6 gets a little complicated. Yeah, very tricky. Maybe then, I don't know what. Yeah. And it's uh, great. As I am looking at the uh, standings after one round, uh, just looking at the 14 and under section, I see uh, Wisconsin, California, Arizona, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Nevada, New York, Texas, Tennessee, Kansas, uh, Georgia, Illinois, all yeah. over the place. Uh, a lot of fun to see. Well, welcome everybody welcome. to the Mechanics Institute Chess Club yep. and the uh, U.S. Junior Chess Congress. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's uh, let's find. Ooh, look at this. Yeah, this is a uh, you know who knows. Elliot Winslow might have this scribbled down somewhere in one of his notebooks. <laughs> as, a, as a variation. Yeah. This game is uh, a game. Let's go back to this game because this sort of seems like 
the curious one to follow here. King F3. What is well, it? Nick, this is um, this is your black's going to be up two pawns, but caught flat-footed after but, but, but only one pawn, yes. Well, if queen takes c two. Oh, that's that's guarded. Oh, it is <laughs> by the queen. Oh my gosh, that's right. The king has gone to f three. Yes. Okay. All right, I'm going to turn on my um, my chest cap here. <laughs> now you need you need the coffee. And uh, someone in the chat was saying Come out. knight d6, but then never mind. And knight d6 would not be good because well, because it's black's move. <laughs> <laughs> At least I got that right. <laughs> Now, is white strategy, given what it is here, hang on to the material and try to, what, launch something on the king side? Or sort of what's the idea of, of white? Bishop yeah. d3 and knight f6 check, maybe. Yeah, point them towards the king side and fire. <laughs> Almost like lining up the <laughs> missiles and launching room. Right? Yeah, bishop b4 was bad, I think. I think you suggested it, though. <laughs> I did, yeah, I did. Well, I'm backpedaling, you know? I mean, that's what I have to do. I have to listen to Nick and just not talk as much. Or, or what you can say, like we say all along, sometimes we throw intentional bad moves so that if anyone's, like, watching the Twitch, <laughs> they get punished <laughs> for, like, watching and then playing it on the board which players cannot do because they are also being monitored by our uh, tournament directors in, in the Zoom. Well, it's funny. I mean, Black has chased the, the king sort of where it wants to go, you know? <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not sure it's its favorite spot. But <laughs> it, it's at least out of the way of those white pieces. <laughs> right, yeah. But the, the white king looks nicely cocooned over there, though. It's hard to get to it. And now a black's in a deep think. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, stay calm, play b6 maybe. b6, bishop d3, and now we're already threatening knight f6 check, pawn takes f6, bishop h7 with at least a draw. Wow. Now, in the chat, they're saying knight, uh, saying uh, knight d6 eventually for white. But you're saying, Nick, that knight is nice there on e4, right? Because if you put yeah. it on d6, you'll be trading it out. Yeah, we want to go for the king. Get that black king. Yeah. They've had a lot of fun chasing our king around. Now it's our turn. And uh, let's check on uh, Leora Ginsburg and uh, Rohan Rajaram. Uh, Leora playing white. Black's got some open files there for the rooks. So white took the two bishops by taking on e6. And black's pretty active here. Wow, that's a Very lot of interesting. development. Every single black piece is out and active. Looks good for black, but Maybe white can, you know, nullify some threats on the king side if there are any, and then slowly push the black pieces back. That has to be the hope. Yeah, it, it's coming soon. You're already starting to look for sacrifices like the 
Bishop H2 check, King takes H2, Queen H4 check, King G8, Rook F6 and double on the H file. Um, maybe a, a bit early, but if you get one more preparatory move with black, then uh, things are happening. You're thinking about it. And look at, look at this game here. Black uh, putting the pressure on against King Hunter 183. <laughs> Someone's in the chat saying that I look frozen, but then you realize I'm not actually frozen. So I, I wish I had a camera behind me to see like what I'm monitoring because I'm monitoring the game number one, right? And then I have tabs of all the other games that I scroll periodically to see the positions. So I know when something develops and then that's how I tell. That's all on one computer. On a second computer, I'm looking ahead at the, the actual Twitch broadcast and I'm looking at the chat. And then on a third computer on the side over here, I'm monitoring the Slack channels uh, to see what's going on there. So sometimes I get frozen because I'm like reading something <laughs> and then uh, Luke's in the chat is like, <laughs> you think I'm like, like frozen and then I move or I say something. So, yeah. This is multitasking on a new front yeah, here. a lot going on, but uh, yeah, no, it's a lot of fun. Uh, you know, if you, you guys handle the uh, chess expertise, I can uh, mess around with all the other stuff. Well, White would love to play King H1 at some point and get that knight out of pin out of the pen. So you've got have you got your laptop today, Abel? Yeah, it's working. All of a sudden it's working. I don't, I don't know why. You didn't bang it or something to wake it up. I did do that. Uh, but, I, I, but I don't know if that was uh, the cause. So, uh, so I have two laptops plus the uh, desktop at Mechanics. So three computers. I'll, I'll take a picture. I'll actually take a picture of this and use it as a uh, Facebook post. Uh, I'll be right back. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Nick, check this position out. I think we had covered this game and we were talking about uh, the bishop on G7 and the long diagonal. And uh, it seems like it's been realized with a pawn advantage. Oh, interesting here. Um, lock to move. So, wow. Now their idea is like the rook takes B3, pawn takes B3, A2. Um, uh, but that's just trading a rook for a pawn. You get a rook for a pawn back. It's, it's a little tricky because the, the white king, you're not getting checkmated and the white king is better than the black king and those pawns on C5 and A3 are on black. So not so clearly uh, good for black as you think at first sight. So should white be trying to trade rooks even though they're down a pawn? Um, I would like to keep a rook on, although if you trade all the rooks, yeah, those pawns on A3, C5 are really weak. That's right, they're um, targets now. Yeah. Yeah, black would double on the uh, file. You just trade rook to D1. You're going to win one of those pawns. And uh, the one day sections will start round two in about uh, 15 minutes. Round two in 15 minutes. And then uh, we'll have some exciting coverage uh, before our break at around 11.15 because we're going to see uh, the ends of these games from the top section uh, and then uh, we'll be able to uh, catch some round two games from the four, uh, 12 and under and 14 and under. So Rook C3 check. They probably should just 
go king b1. Looks a little brave, but you're not afraid of rook takes b3, a takes b3, a2, check, king c2. I wonder if black's looking at that because to me, rook c3 check doesn't seem like a good move just because it, because uh, um, now you've given white the file. Yeah, it sort of strands the rook out there if you don't have a plan. Hola, TG Alien. But uh, you're making me wonder whether Black is thinking that. This could backfire a bit for Black. Because what else would have been the purpose of that? Well, the alternative was to trade rooks. Hi, everyone, and thank you for those that are joining. Uh, we will be uh, here to cover uh, round two of the one-day sections that start in about uh, 15 minutes. Uh, we're catching uh, round four here of the 16 and 18 and under. Um, and then uh, we'll take a lunch break, and then we will be back to cover the rest of the action throughout the day. If you haven't done so already, look under White's Clock and you'll see the purple follow button on the Twitch screen. Click that so you follow Mechanics Chess and uh, you'll be notified when we uh, come back uh, on the air. Uh, but then you'll also be notified when we have uh, any of our cool events, including the Mechanics Institute Tuesday Night Marathon. Uh, do you have an estimate of when this might end? Do you mean the one day section event? Because uh, yesterday they, they ended at around 5 uh, p.m. Uh, Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern. Yeah, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern, around there. All right, so we'll keep an eye on that game. This game, yeah, this game. Yeah, who's winning? Us who's up. Yeah. I mean, Black's up a pawn, so... If, if maybe black should go bishop to d4, try to get in e5. Yeah, there you go. I love that. Bishop to d4 followed by e5. But, okay, you try to stop it with rook to e1. And it's, uh, there it is. Ask and you shall receive. Black doesn't quite have rook takes b3 check. Hey, and uh, let, let me flip to this game here because uh, Nick was talking about it. Uh, Rohan Rajaram delivered bishop uh, h2 check, and uh, that was the line you were talking about. Yeah, so I don't Black is just going to get two pawns and, a and an attack going here, but actually it might be a rook and two pawns. King takes queen check, king back. Um, knight takes f2, threatens the queen and queen h1 mate. Forces rook takes f2, then queen check. Wow, yeah. And then rook up. Does that win, Nick? Yeah, it's it's um, either completely winning or close to winning. Big advantage, at least. Yeah, Leora uh, just got caught with her pieces, uh, not as active as they could be. <clears throat> And in, in another game we were following, uh, Stunning Garbage plays Rook H3, which uh, we were talking about, Sheena Zhang uh, against uh, Ariadne Dodd. 
I'm, I'm glad she played that. You know, it's just, it's going for the attack. It's much more fun for us. For yeah. Us. What a scary looking move too. Yeah. Now the question is, is it scary actually rather than just scary looking? King G7 maybe. Get that king to participate in the defense or maybe the rook. He's going for it. G4. Mm. Oh, it was White's move. Huh. Well, you never know about things like this. And uh, in the chat, uh, they're talking about the 16 and 18 and under. Uh, 16 and 18 and under, anyone... Uh, can play. Uh, it's not limited to 16, 17, 18. Uh, and in fact, quite a few of these players are 14, 13, 12 year old. Uh, but I think that, but the, I think what can be difficult to understand is that if you are 16 to 18, you must play in that section. It, it, right. that it, it can look like that. Right. Uh, but and under, qualifies everyone under that age. Right. Uh, the, the way to think of it is we lumped the 16 and 18 together as one section. This is USCF online rated. Is USCF online rated. Which means that 500 rating points that somebody just gained. That's pretty impressive. That's chess.com <laughs> chess points. Oh, OK. Chess.com points. Uh, let's uh, let's go back to that uh, that wild one we were looking at, and uh, I think Black is still trying to figure out what to do. King F3 is is played and has not made a move yet. Well, okay, so B6, Nick and bishop d3 and then white's almost threatening to trap the queen there with rook b1 and rook a1 or something yeah that bishop b4 was really yeah i, I think you need to go back to e7 with the bishop just admit that you made a bad move well, it just loses one tempo. I mean, black is still fine if you go like right now, bishop e7, bishop d3, knight to b4. Hitting that bishop. Then he lashes out with pawn to f5. Okay. It's loose for both sides on the king side now. And uh, thought quite a while before uh, playing that. So a lot of candidate moves were looked at. Uh, let me, let's go back to that game we were looking at, uh, Sanji Vanand playing white here in this position against uh, Brejesh Chakrabarty. This has gone how Nick thought it might with white trying to prevent E5. And maybe even trying to play Bishop E5, huh? Well, Bishop E5 looks good. That would just take that powerful Bishop out. Black must be frustrated that there's no trick here with rook takes b3 check or something. And uh, in the other, another game we were looking at, uh, Paul's idea seems like it came to fruition with uh, Leora Ginsburg and Rohan Rajaran. 
Oh, what a nasty threat. Look at that. Like you almost have to play uh, e4 or something, huh? Well, there's bishop to g4, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it looks better, right? Right now, uh, rook and two pawns for the uh, two bishops <clears> of <throat> material equality. Bishops could hang together and defend, then you'd be happy enough with white. So when white puts his bishop on h3, oh, what's this, e4? Oh, that, that brings the bishop at d2 into the defense. Right. It's funny, I didn't even look at that move for some reason. Yeah, maybe combined with bishop g4, but I'm not sure. It's probably better not to give up the, the pawn first. Yeah, because now black could play queen h4 check and take on e4 with the queen, but that's three pawns and a rook for two bishops. Yeah, that, that's a lot. Bishop g4 would have hung in there. Oh, just takes with the pawn. I liked your doorway better. Keep your good solid pawn structure. Well, maybe Black's going to try to make use of this e pawn. Well, Black can now if uh, plays uh, e3 and closes up that bishop from guarding h6. Yeah, exactly. So it's not clear who. I, yeah. Bishop g4. B3. Lots of action in downtown San Francisco, folks. Yeah. Yeah, you can hear it, huh? The sound, uh, not, not the sound of silence. The streets of San Francisco. Streets of San Francisco. And uh, in two minutes, start the one-day sections, and uh, we'll probably move from some of these games to follow uh, some of that action. We'll keep an eye on uh, that. But uh, look at this game. This is uh, from the top board. Black got control of c4, but uh, white's trying to uh, launch some pawns towards the king side. Oh, that's great. It's kind of a balanced game. One side, the advantage on the queen side, the other on the king side. Yeah. I like the players are rated exactly the same on chess.com, 2186. <laughs> and, and they're they're pretty evenly matched because they're USCF rating. Uh, white is twenty thirty eight, black twenty one oh eight. So uh, we have some parity here. Some good players. Yeah. Well, I mean, what what happens here if white takes? It's dangerous for black to take with the H pawn, I think because white can try to sneak in there and the with uh even if it's slow with rook h1 and queen h3 and so on queen h7 yeah. bishop h6 it's not going to be easy for black yeah i might go queen h3 first or taking, keep your options open. Okay, yes, yes.
more and more I get convinced that it's the king side attacker that enjoys the advantage in these positions. I'm I'm late to the I'm late to the show. Oh wow, let me uh let me flip back to this game. Okay, we got that rook b3 move thrown in. But this isn't uh you can you take the rook the rook. No, but can't you take take and then bishop e3? Yes. That's uh double edged. <laughs> well, no, can you help me count? Bishop e3, say we go back bishop e4. Does that lose or win? Trade bishop takes d4, pawn takes d4, b4. Is the black king in time to stop that? Yes. Just by one move. Yeah. Therefore, yeah. therefore you are a pawn up in the king ending. Um, but, but yeah, white has those two connected pass pawns. But black gets, you know, the, the E and D and F bonds that come up. So, yeah, it's it's very sharp position on edge. You would think that black would have the chances there, though. But rook takes E7 is also a good move because you're threatening bishop H6. Um, and so does that mean that black has no time to take on G2? Um, maybe, maybe you can allow the rook check D3, take on G2, bishop H6, go F5. Yes, there's no checkmate. Okay, very, yeah, very good. That's, somehow black is still a bit better, but, um, yeah, you, you feel like white's got several different possibilities for active play. And uh, just uh, flipping up, flipping over to uh, the start of the 14 and under section and the uh, top board, we are seeing it here. Noob at Chess Hippo. Who uh -huh. is uh, Christopher Chung, rated 1747, playing the uh, top seed Hirsch Singh, uh, who's rated 2253. So uh, just and checking. Owen's out. defense, and White's played Bishop C4. That's a funny move, That's obviously. Right. Yeah, Black can hit with C5 and. Uh... Yeah, it's funny. Black's already probably close to equality because of that. People love to play bishop to c4, but it's not as, as good again when the pawn's on e6. And then uh, another game that just started is uh, Daniel Lin, Smiley Face 4. 2027, playing Isaiah Brewster, 1554. Wow, look at look at this opening here. Monkus Gamer, who's uh, playing white in this game, he was in the Twitch chat, or she was in the Twitch, uh, Twitch chat. And uh, they Twitch he, chat 10 times fast. I cannot. I'm not, I'm not gonna embarrass myself. I'm, 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 I'm afraid of what'll come out. Like a tongue twister, yeah. But a king's gambit. Wow, okay. Now he, he didn't he didn't take on g4, and now you can go pawn to g6, which uh kind of strands the knight. Yeah, yeah, knight c3 doesn't look right. Well, you, maybe he's going to sacrifice and bishop check and... 
It's a wild game. Uh, definitely bring in the action here. Now, didn't Monkus promise us he was going to play a wild action game? I think, and that's uh, Carter Ray, Monkus Gamer, Carter Ray, who's rated 742, playing Dasari Ravi, who's 1292. But uh, do we think uh, Dasari, who's, who's the higher rated, is familiar with uh, what is happening here? Well, if you play e4, e5 to e4, you should have at least one line of the king's gambit worked out for black. <laughs> and as uh, someone was saying, uh, isn't, isn't king's gambit the first opening in the uh, MCO? It is, yes. <laughs> You start there and then you work your way. Ah, uh, but Marcus, he ran back to C4, so it's <laughs> gone a bit wrong for him here. And real Inaki Zabala. The chess trifecta is back at mechanics. <laughs> we are here. We're in the virtual mechanics, although I'm sitting at the Mechanics Institute. I am in the chess office. Uh, and we're hoping uh, all three of us can get back here uh, soon enough. All right, well, we'll follow and see what uh, happens with uh, Monkus Gamer, but uh, let's check some of the action in the games from the uh, 16 and 18 and under section. Let's uh, look at uh, Leora Ginsburg and Rohan Rajaram. And what, what happened to uh, the passion fruit? Uh, the green tea? Yeah, yeah, green tea passion fruit. That was the wild game. And uh, let's, uh, let's go to that. There it is. Has there been more sacrifices? <laughs> OK. Uh, he sacrificed the exchange. So black is actually up material. Um. um. Looks like white is up material. I'm sorry. Yeah, white is now up material having been bound material, so. The black took back with the rook on F6. Correct. Yeah, I, this doesn't look like it was the right thing to do, I, th I would think. It is noting that uh, if I go back a few moves, uh, that taking on passant was not the best. Yep. That's how that played out. Um, that could <laughs> probably take with the pawn, too. Is white, should white worry too much here? About 95 check or something? Yeah, that's Seven a threat. Right. That's true. Black, black probably has compensation for the exchange here. So, What if you just... go uh, B6? Oh, uh, white, white's turn right now. Um, white, white needs to try to get unclogged a little bit here. Yeah. Watch out for an ID5 check. Maybe it's not as that easy. Yeah, now my king on F3 isn't as happy as it used to be. Right. Well, maybe it should move to, to uh, E4s. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so let's see. A fighting king. Hey, so uh, real Naki Zabala is saying, I have a match against an NM in a few hours. Game in 10, no increment. The odds of him playing D4 are higher. I'm thinking of going Spielman Indian or E6 Benoni. What is the Spielman Indian? <laughs> I think that's, you know, without knight F6, you do some E6 bishop to B4. Ah, OK. Well, I recommend uh, the Bogoyabov Indian because Bogoyabov was such an interesting player. 
There you have it, good and safe, the Bogo Indian. I'm going to root for wild and crazy Benoni just to entertain us. Hey, guys, what is going on here? Oh, wow. So Bishop D3 has been played. <clears throat> So knight e5, king e2, king e2, knight g4. Maybe that's not good. But that that white king, it's uh, a little disturbed right now. Should black ratchet up the pressure with a e5 or something? Maybe. Or, or just the slow development bishop to d7 to e8. There's a little trap there of bishop d7, bishop h7 check, king h7, rook d7, knight e5 check at the end. Yeah, now, now it's black who has the better development. It used to be white had better development, less material, and it's switched around. And uh, let's do a quick check-in on uh, Leora Ginsburg and uh, Rohan Rajaram. <clears throat> Does uh, Leora have any uh, counter-punching here? Those bishops get loose. They can be terrifying. It almost looks as if, like, the king is looking okay there. Well, queen f4 threatens queen f2, uh, threatens queen h2 check. Good big time. Good force on the g3. Yeah. And then the queen goes back to e4, threatening queen rook h1 main. Ooh, that looks powerful. Uh, maybe white can play bishop f3. Yeah, queen to f4, bishop f3 is. is... And queen f4 played. The idea is to run away to e2 with the king. Yeah. If white gets unstuck here and, and can find some way to attack with these bishops, it could be dangerous for black. Hey, Nick, look what happened in that game with the uh, bishop and pawns. Oh, what a fascinating end game here. So, um, yeah, we got that end game. White pushed the C pawn instead of the B pawn. Does it, that... I guess uh, the question is. Can yeah, you're we... getting. Can puzzle white, position. Yeah, can can white white king hold off the four against two? Um, there there should be Zugzwang. No, well, white should uh, white has to play b five then e five and black. Should... Is white gonna have? Is White going to have time to play? Uh... Okay, B5 is forced. Uh, otherwise, it's lost. Um, E5 also forced. King C4 would threaten King C5, but King B6 uh, looks like it keeps the White King out.
And black should win, right? Looks like black should win, but okay, Abel's, Abel's right. You just try to hang back with that uh, white king, try to stop those three pawns from advancing with some classic endgame studies on that. Yes, I know. Those are the ones that are, are so difficult to solve, too. <laughs> right? Classic, but hard. Huh? The connected pass pawns versus the connected pass pawn positions. Those are just horrible. And uh, we'll, we'll keep an eye on this one. Uh, These are very rare in practice, I think. And look, and uh, going going back to this king's gambit, just because uh, it's sort of fascinating that kids playing the king's gambit. I think this was our fault. We asked Marcus to play something active. Well, but, but look at this. Oh, maybe he'll thank us. <laughs> exactly. It's like, this is looking uh, not too shabby. Queen H5 or something. Get in the spirit here. Oh, yeah. Just don't think a second about material. Oh, the <laughs> queen. Well, what about Queen F3? Same thing. Right. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Well, then you're attacking the knight, though, no? True. Yeah. I assume black's going to play knight c2 check or something. No. And then king d2 attacks that knight. Yeah. And in uh, some other games, this one from the 14... An under section. I like how these players just like throw 93 in without thinking too much. And then, you know, we'll see what happens after Queen F3. Daniel Lynn, game still developing. Uh, but back to that pawn in game, just because. Uh, I don't know what to think of this. Well, I think that F pawn comes up and uh, white gets in Zook's Fong and the black pawns should be able to slowly creep up the pool. Yeah. White has one last try with King C4, which has to be met by King D6, right? Yeah, D6 or B6. Yes, D6 is even safer. So while we wait for the move, let's go back to Elijah Patrick in Passion mm -hmm. Fruit Green Tea. Whoa. E5 has been played. Suddenly looking, uh, you know, Black's pieces are making sense now. And uh, let me flip over to the top board in the 16 and 18 and under section, because it looks like white has uh, made a move, but uh, there's a lot going on here. Oh, is that a peace sacrifice? He's offered the bishop? It looked like he's offering the bishop there, but... Does he get it back though after check? Yeah, yeah if, king, 
if king f7 rook h6 i mean that's that's or king f8 white's not going to play queen h8 check probably probably he's going to take on g6 but then queen e8 maybe rook h3 A king f8, queen h8 check is an even material ending. So huh. yeah. King, king f7, rook h6 attack, but... Uh... Yeah. Mm. Rook h6, right? Oh, rook f3. Rook H3. Yeah, yeah Rook H3. Clever. I'm giving back the piece. Just no arguments. Yeah, Queen H8 forced. No. Doesn't even consider it. <laughs> Goes for the attack, but... Queen G6, Queen to G8. You, uh, and then Queen G5 check picks up the rook. Oh. Oh, look at oh. Uh, look at black with rook, rook D1 looking at Queen H1. But will you have enough time to do all that? I love this back and forth. Yeah. Punch and counter punch. Yeah, and lots of lots of calculation going on here. I like rook f7 check, king d8, rook takes g7. Maybe you're uh, you don't get mated. The white king will just walk up the board to safety. It will. Well, it hopes it will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who's attacking who? What a game! What a great game. Oh, these players are, are really entertaining us this round. This is a... Yeah, especially, yeah, especially in this section, the 16 and 18 and under. I mean, we're here at round four, uh, approaching championship rounds, and uh, players are going for it. At first sight, this looked like a, an instant win for white, but this counterattacking rook d1 move, this is quite a game. And uh, let's do a quick check-in on Leora Ginsburg and Rohan Rajaram here. If rook h3, rook g1 check is even possible. So the rook is brought into the game to maybe play check in rook f3. Still Everything good. is hanging by a thread here. I, I mean, I love that each player is, is going for it. You know, they get their pieces active. They have to defend, but they're also counterattacking. Well, look at, uh, let me just verify the section. Yeah, so this, this game that I'm going to hear is from the uh, 14 and under section. Uh, let me go back a few moves. I think White's maybe lost here, Nick, right? I mean. So the game that we're, we're looking at now, Christopher, oh. Christopher Harris, uh, 994 rated against uh, Jaden Zhu, 1773. Boom, with that rook right there. Takes, takes the knight. Yeah. Look at that knight there. Nice little little move because you cannot take the rook or you're going to get forked. Or, you, or can you take the rook? What's the threat? Knight okay. takes and then the queen to h2. Well, the queen, queen on d3 is being attacked. Yeah, and then it, it moves to d4 where now, now you can't take that rook. Uh, or else you get king queen forked. But now this is the position. I 
I guess the question now is now what? Does Bishop F6 trying to dislodge the uh, queen from defending G4? You could sacrifice the queen, pawn takes F3, knight takes F3, knight takes F3, bishop B4, knight B4 with yeah. <laughs> getting a lot further. Yeah, a rook in two pieces for the queen. And uh... It played out as you thought out. Black won this game here, uh, delivering check and can't take the pawn or you're gonna push D2. So nice win by Black here. A great ending. Great yeah. ending. Uh, let's do a quick check here on uh, Stunning Garbage. Sheena Zeng. Playing white against uh, Ariadne Dodd. You know she's going to play some stunning garbage on you. Well, you you you're uh, waiting for it, and uh, like we said, the stunning is uh, in a good way garbage. Big time differential. You know what? I, I tell all my students, you're not supposed to leave a rook like bottled in like that yeah that is that's a that's a tough one and yeah the you time tell your students not to put their knights on g7 as well <laughs> Pin, <laughs> pinned <laughs> pinned no it's funny how all these chess rules are there <laughs> broken every minute of the day you know <laughs> So we have uh, in the chat, I, I like my steak, like I, I like my Hikaru apologies, rare. <laughs> my Hikaru apologies. Hey, what happened with him? There's some beef with him and uh, Hansen or something I was like reading about. Are they just messing around? Who knows? I have no idea. And uh, Daniel Lin gets a win here. As we uh, see that. So congratulations to uh, Daniel Lin. That was board two in the 14 and under section. And uh, let's take a look at the, the King's Gambit game with uh, Monkus Gamer. This is one where it looks like the black is oh, uh, this game, yeah. Black is up a uh... oh, it looked like Monkus was Gosh. winning earlier. It's sort of hard to tell who's uh who's winning this, no? Well, Bishop G4, yeah, I mean, there's still a lot of pieces flying all over the board. <laughs> it's like know. the pieces are just like <laughs> hanging everywhere, hanging around. But those black bishops are pretty good at controlling the territory. Bishop F2 here looks pretty nice. Yeah. And uh, going back to Leora Ginsburg, because it looks like... Uh, Rohan is crashing through here, just having just played Rook takes Bishop. Players are showing no fear. Yeah, that this is this is um, just that work is my only question. Take it and you can play check after take it, right? And then Queen H one and Rook H two. Yeah, but the Queen on e1 is guarded. Yeah, oh, know. this this move wins the queen. That's that. Yeah, that's what I said. Check there. Oh, I'm sorry. That oh, that's all right. I didn't say e2 check. Powerful move. Yeah. 
Yeah. Nice combination by Leonora. Yeah. No, Leonora is white. Leonora is white. Oh. So she's going to get caught up here. Queen e2, queen h1, king f2, rook h2. Yeah. And then white is losing. Yeah, yeah. Uh oh, uh, Luke finished his game uh, before we got to it. We're going to check it out. Did you win? All right, good job. Two out of two. All right, good job. Says he missed like 11 mates. <laughs> Luke would judge in his game. All right, let's go back to... Uh, What's the crazy game where both sides attacking with it? That oh, rook to h3 and the yeah, king to right. f3. That's right. Oh, that game. Yeah, that's right. Well, then there's this game. Uh, let's see. What was that? In the, uh... That was the board one. Was that board one? Yeah, sure. Yeah, board one. Here we go. Very dramatic game. Oh, very, very nice. You uh, you remember that one? Now this is Asish Panda against Kevin Zhu on board one in the sixteen and eighteen and under. Why didn't Black? Uh, so Black did, Black could have played um, Rook G one check after Rook H three. But instead played queen g8. White checked on g5. And then black played back to e8. Maybe. Well, they, they both look good for black. Yeah. Suddenly. Oh. At least a, a shot throwing a move in there. The idea of rook g6. This extra bishop isn't, you know, doing much here. And both players still have enough time to work stuff out. So something like queen f7, and if rook g6, bishop f8? I don't know. This. That's looking good for black now. It, yeah. I, I, that, he, or one move after um, rook h1, he went backwards instead of, uh, maybe there was some, some way of taking the bishop or leaving the rook on its aggressive square f7. Yeah, the white rook has just has been twirling around the board around the f file and h file. And uh, in another game in uh, that section, in another universe, in another galaxy far far away this is chloe gaw the king hunter against uh terry luo who's 2277 oh, oh this is kind of interesting huh let's let's see i mean it's a, a book draw but let's see if she can defend it's it, uh... and sort of what is the idea for like for players, you know, it's a book draw, but what is sort of the idea? You got to have the king. You know, yeah, to... let, don't let black get a pass pawn voluntarily by playing g3. Yeah, this is a mistake, I think, right? Why now play g3? Now it's a little difficult. It's still a draw, but now it's 
it's a little tough. Right. Plus, white's at 10 seconds, and black's got 36 minutes. Uh, I mean, in principle, trading a pawn is a good idea, but not in that position where you give black a pass pawn. Yeah, it's it's, and she's got to move six seconds. Okay. Let uh, black yeah. play g4 and and tr and then trade. Yes. That would have been much better, much easier. Now you have to just have excellent technique to draw, and with eleven seconds, you know, almost nobody would be able to do that. Okay. All right, she's she's holding it for now. Well, Black should have tried F four maybe instead of this King H four move. Well, when you have thirty six minutes, you don't have to rush. Yeah. <laughs> seeing the ending here so what what is black looking to do like you're strategizing black you're just trying to advance that pawn and position your king or that's a good idea get everything up as far as you can and then play and but it's funny how white's keeping the rook close like that when the, I would put it on b2 instinctively. But. Give, give your rook scope for checking. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, now that. Now the king's getting cut off. So now what, rook e3 and trying to play king d3 and rook e2 or something? That sounds like a good plan if you can. Uh... And if the rook moves the other way, then king f3. Yeah, this has gotten bad. Well, you see something like rook e3, king to g2, king to d3, and you're hit with h4 um, to break up the pawns and make a draw. Mm -hmm. So. Got to be careful as, as black. Does F3 check work after rookie three, king G2, F3, king G3? Guess not, no. Oh, it's king G3. The rook, black rook. Yeah, that holds for white. Yeah. And uh, checking back uh, that other game on the top board in the 16 and 18 and under. Whew. I wouldn't know. Uh, does Black have a, a, a way forward to win this? Yeah. Oh, I love White is being aggressive, not just hanging back, but going for F5. Yeah, pushing. Yes. Trying to break, break through. This is a real fight, this game. An incredible fight. And now black is, uh, you know, five and a half minutes around there. My God, the, the bishop, it's it's gone. King F8, queen D8 check. Um, what ending must be good for white with those advanced pawns. Bishop F6, I'm tricked, but Queen H6. Yeah, it's going to be tough because it looks like uh, Yeah, suddenly wow. things have gotten difficult for Black. Wow. Again. 
uh, check out this position. I'm, I'm seeing it. Uh, this is Sriram's game against uh, Adve Bonsal. Uh, we hadn't checked in on it for a little bit. Sriram it's amazing black. White was able to accomplish this with the Rook going all the way around the board. Well, I think Black is. Oh, I see. Black wins a piece. With yeah, this. that's it. Everyone. Yeah. No tricks that's left. It. Yeah. And uh, in another game, we were following stunning garbage. Is white here, but. Uh, Things turned around. And we got a draw. Yeah. So this looks like it'll be drawn. Stunning Garbage offers a draw. Stunning Garbage with 30 seconds left. Yeah, but there's no... This is this is almost impossible to lose. Back to the uh, Elijah Platnick passion fruit green tea game. Yeah, that that's a great game. And now material is even. Let's see two pawns fell. That white thing is not in a great place. But counterattack. Checkmate. checkmate will cure a lot of ills. <laughs> <laughs> it's the perfect remedy, yeah. Maybe Bishop F8. Bishop F8, there's there's wisdom in that move. And then maybe rook b7 starting to get rid of some of that wood over there. Yeah, there, there are some things like knight d4 check, bishop d4, queen c6. Oh, that's an inconvenient truth. Well, it picks up the exchange, but drops some pawns. Yeah. And uh, I need to bring this other rook into the game. Just double the rooks then, I suppose. And I uh, just want to take a quick look. Knight d4 check then maybe as well. Wow. This is a game from the age 12 and under section. Uh, Carlos Varela, who is playing black, is uh, rated uh, 2016, playing Yash Date, who is 1411 as white. And it looks like uh, Yash is up a piece, you know? Just temporarily. It's it's Black's move. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're right. Bishop just took the knight on f4. This well, is this top board in the 12 and under section. Black looks like he's a little better. Even material, but yeah, maybe a, a little better for black. A little more space. And uh, just because this game is uh, fascinating to watch, uh, Monk is Gamer he played the, the the King's Gambit. Oh, the King's Gambit with, game. Yeah. With no fear. Um, so Monkis is down only the exchange. But then it has three extra pawns. Look at that. And now the king's marching over trying to deliver mate. My god, he takes the pawn on c7. He's just winning this game. You know, oh, I'm going to try to guess the opening here. King's Gambit. <laughs> sharp, Paul, sharp. 
Um, yeah, it looks like White's in charge here. Oh, wow. Look at that. You like that? F6. Uh, Shriram's in the chat. What is up? Rhino091. Almost stalemated someone. That's uh, devastating, this F6 move. These King's Gambit players never stop attacking. What's the, the only move is rookie one, I think. Oh! That is it, right? I'm just rook B8. Yeah. Monkus Gamer, fantastic Monkus win. Gamer. You did it. Nice win. Thank you, Monkus. You you entertained us. Entertained us, and you played a uh, King's Gambit, which uh, always takes some courage. So a uh, nice win, and White got the win here in this game. That is the final position. Let's take a look at uh, how it played out. Wow, this was a brave game on the white side. So uh, An up, up and down battle. Look at that. Bishop f6 was played. And then uh, queen h6. And then bishop g5. Yeah, that's a stunning move, isn't it? <laughs> But then Incredible. black just did not have, um, yeah, look at that. It's it was a nice try, Bishop G5. Yeah, it was. Now, in this position, could black have played uh, rook C3? And lose oh, the queen no, to rook no, H7. rook H7. Rook H7. Yeah. And then that's what happened. What a win there. What a game. On the top board. Uh, so, Asish. And uh, goes four out of four now. And then uh, another game Terrific. of players that are uh, three out of three is this one right here between uh, Elijah Platinum, 2015 rated, and Ryan Chung. Passion is there three. really a three-year-old playing in the tournament? Was that in the chat? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, it, it's, it, it's good to hear that he's a good player at three years old. We don't want him to be over the hill. Yeah, we do. Uh, <laughs> the, the, the Judith bot. So, uh, yeah, he is not uh, three, uh, probably 13. Is yeah. there are what is the younger who is the youngest player in the tournament? We must know that, right? I mean, we would have seen it uh, yesterday, I think, in the uh, six and under. But uh, Judith's in the chat. Hey, do you know? Uh, oh, Shriram's twelve. Uh, do we know the age of the youngest? I mean, I would not be surprised if there were a a four year old playing. That wouldn't surprise yeah. me. But I'm wondering if there was a three year old. And we have gotten requests before calls to the Mechanics Institute saying, hey, uh, my three and a half year old is showing a lot of promise. You know, do you have lessons? <laughs> do you have lessons for three and a half? <laughs> we try to dissuade them from uh, such things. I think it's an interesting, yeah. <laughs> oh. So anyway, let's see. Uh, uh, you know, I got to hand it to uh, Leora. She's trying to uh, keep putting up a fight here. Although, uh, looking tough. Ah. Uh. Ah. Uh. Yeah. Uh, let's take a look at this game. This is also from the uh, 
12 and under section, slow cynical quip, who is uh, Sean Kelly. Uh, now, now, this is an example uh, before you analyze this game. I'll look at uh, SF, SF Deals uh, blowing up the Twitch chat with actually a nice little picture there. So um, this is an example where Sean Kelly is rated 1207, and he's playing Ananya Anant, who is uh, 1663. But we know Sean Kelly's a stronger player. So how does it look? This looks... Uh, Pretty okay for white here, no? Yeah, I mean, queen d6 and then try to muscle in to c7 and, and you know, un unless there's a perpetual check, which there might be right away, right? With, oh no, you can't check on d2, huh? Um, I, would, I, I think white might be winning this. I, black should have been careful, more careful here. Yeah, clearly better for white. Now here is an end game for you. This okay. is a... Uh, <clears throat> Is noob at chessicles. I'm trying to see the section here. This is the <clears throat> the top board in the 14 and under section. Christopher Chung, noob at chess hippo, is rated 1747, playing Hirsch Singh, who's rated 2253 uh, as black. And let me change the orientation here. So the lower rated player is white here. What do you what do you think of this? Well, if I'm black, I mean, I might think about playing pawn e3 check before I take on c3. And then I can maybe play, king, you know, so e3 check takes on e3, takes on c3, king c3, and then king e4, and try to get in on that way because if you just take on c3 check and then play something like bishop e6 and knight c5 and i don't know though black has pet chances to make even if black plays passively there's still the chance of an outside pass pawn huh where is there and sf deals if you're in the uh the chat uh oh you're not playing the tourney why not why aren't you playing? He plays our, our marathon. So does Black have a, a, a way in here if he doesn't play pawn e3? And hey there, St. Louis chess player. Your game just finished. How'd you do? If Black doesn't play pawn e3, how is Black going to make any way forward here? Board one. A uh, St. Louis chess player. Were you board one white in the uh, 16 and 18 section? Asish. Oh, dude, that that was an awesome game. We we were uh, we were uh, following that game quite a bit. So St. Louis chess players in the chat uh, use top board navigated that uh the queen and the rook that was a great game uh you should watch uh the recording of the broadcast because we were covering that game extensively Jaden 118 uh are you Jaden Zhu we were watched a little bit of that game Jaden are you this Jaden are you piano Jaden who won by checkmate all right congratulations what color is your hair? Because uh, at the Mechanics Institute, he would come in with uh, purple, blue, sometime if you remember him. Still blue? <laughs> Good. Good for you. So anyway, 
Uh, let's get back to some game. Let's go back to Passion Fruit and Elijah Platnick. Very awesome. Who is Star Ray? SF Deals. Oh, come on. You, you, you can't uh, be meaning that because she only starts her games at the Tuesday Night Marathon all the time. Uh, Judith Starre or uh, TD Extraordinaire. So what do you think, guys? The king is now on F2. Yeah, if White gets that rook out, I wouldn't be happy with black. Maybe we, we have to check some more. Queen v2 check. Raid the queens. Should be okay for black. Love seeing all the uh, mechanics representation, the mechanics kids in the chat. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. How many kids uh, watching the chat uh, go to uh, chess weekend tournaments and know Glenn Panner and uh, Merritt? Just say hey in the chat. Monkus Gamer, dude, we were watching your game. We, we, we covered it extensively, your King's Gambit. Nice win. High, high five, Monkus. Yeah, high five. We saw that, uh, what was that, G6? G6 push? And then forcing mate with F6, the rook. F6, yeah. F6, yeah. And then mate with the rook. So good job, Monkus Gamer. Congrats. Well played. So Black striding 95 here. This game has been very dramatic. A real fight. Oh, he allowed that, but time running short now for uh, uh -oh. 95, Ashley. right? What's going on here? That's the exchange. Time pressure creeping in on some. Yeah, I might have just missed it. So now it's two pawns up for black, but the time is low. There may be some tricky checks. And mm. uh, uh, let me jump to this game real quick. This is a top game in the 14 and under section. The top rated player who is playing uh, uh, black here First thing against Christopher Chung. Oh, what happened to those uh, black king side pawns or white king side pawns? Yeah, what an odd game here. I mean, why, why, why didn't the bishop just capture that? Oh, he's worried about that other pawn. What is this game? Now what's happening? <laughs> now it's a queen end game. Oh, are you, are you gonna get a good check in? I think, yeah. Oh, oh. I don't know about that one. He has to go to queen e C four check wins the wins the queen. Oh, no, it doesn't. What am I talking about? King, yeah, had that. But the black bishop comes in with check. Black is... White took incredible risks to get to get this oh, far. Oh, it was. What a dramatic game. Oh, did black miss a... Uh, it's over here. Close to mate here. It looks like it's mate. Cool. Yeah. 
Bishop G4 mate. Oh, we didn't do it. That's, those <laughs> pieces are not. Oh, Queen D3 check. Okay. He's got a mate that way. There it is. Wow. Huge upset, right? Uh, crazy Hill. No, I think the uh, higher rated player was black. Oh, okay. And he was. So uh, worked it out, but uh, my, my, my bad. Put up a put up a fight. So uh, great game. So congrats to Hirsch Singh, who's the top seed in the 14 and under. Back to Elijah Platnik and uh, Passion Fruit Green Tea. Wow. Who is uh, Ryan Cheung. Queen H5. Okay. Well, White White's hoping for enough counterplay for a draw here now. Fifteen seconds remaining. Could get one pawn back. And everyone, if you have not done so already, make sure you click that follow button. Uh, we will be taking a break around 11.15ish and then uh, be back about 12.45, 1. Uh, click that follow and you'll know when we are back on and we're going to cover all the rest of the rounds the whole day for uh, the final day of the 2021 U.S. Junior Chess Congress. Well, White's probably okay now. Take one of those queenside pawns. I mean, this has been an epic battle. And yeah, one pawn up, but two and a half minutes down from the clock. <laughs> and uh, Luke's in the chat. He's, he's been following longer than Judith. <laughs> I mean, but, White can probably win both the queenside pawns. Uh, Judith, Judith Busy uh, directing the tournament too, so <laughs> we're gonna give her a pass. 15 seconds for uh, Black. <clears throat> well, Rook G7 uh, almost works here, right? Well, uh, you could interpose the uh, yeah. black rook. And Rohan Rajaram won his game against Leora Ginsburg. So congrats to Rohan. Uh, Leora put up a great battle. Yeah. yeah. Put up a fight. And just real quick, uh, let's look at uh, Sean Kelly's game. Slow, cynical quip. Looks like uh, he's going to get it done, working on getting it done. Against uh, Ananya Anant in the uh, 12 and under section. Back up to uh, the big game, one of the big games in the top section. Oh, wait a minute. Does Black, does Black um, maybe got a draw here because the White Queen is so badly placed? No, probably not. <clears throat> Oh, he just blundered the bishop. Oh. Oh, that's sad. Oh, it's hanging. Oh, oh. On to A5, hold the bishop. Yeah. That's bad finish. Oh, that was, yeah, that's tough. Was was up a pawn at that point, right? Yeah. Wow. Time, time, time pressure. Yep. The thing is, is that when you make a mistake like that, the the chance of things snowballing just increases, right? Because you start going on tilt. Now you're just in a lost position, and you know, just. Well, white can still go wrong with King G1 here. 
what D8 would get you. And now Rook G7 is a killer, right? Sorry? Rook G7, Queen G7, Queen D8. Queen G8, Bishop D4. Oh, okay, sorry, I, my computer was lagging a bit. White well, could have taken on G7, I think, and instead of- Wow, now they're both under 10. King F2. Uh oh, or that? Yeah, it's good. it's good. Okay, but now it's seconds for each, so you know you have to avoid the blunder. <clears throat> yeah, and one player uh, got caught with a blunder. Now just White has to make sure it doesn't uh, reciprocate. But White has all everything defended. At good strategy and low time. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> just make sure everything is covered. No mates in one, no hanging pieces. But black is going to try to uh, complicate by pushing those past pawns over there. Yeah. It's looking dim. Yeah, it's because it's just kind of like blundering stuff here. Well, I think there was no way to get yeah, out of it. Yeah, this, is, this is now completely but lost. And white wins. Nice win there by uh, Elijah Platnik, who now also goes to four out of four. Uh, uh, tough loss for Ryan Chung. Who uh, yeah. think things looked okay and then uh, sort of got caught. But uh, with what this, a great game! What a it, fantastic game! What this means though now is that uh, we only have two players with perfect scores. Uh, that's going to be in the uh, in the sixteen and eighteen and under section. Uh, that is Elijah Platnik, rated twenty fifteen, and uh, Asish. Panda, who is St. Louis chess player in the Twitch chat, rated 2038. Uh, looks like they'll be playing each other uh, in round five, and they are the lone perfect scorers uh, in the uh, top section. Uh, we still have another uh, uh, more games going on in that uh, 16 and 18 and under. This is one of them, both at 30 seconds left. Uh, this is women's candidate master Ashley Pang. Blobby the Blobfish with white against Grace Deng. Although uh, black is upper rook. Well, there's still is some. Right? Oh, she's looking to. Oh. Okay, looking for uh, checkmate. Still some. some... Yeah, rook H2, two H2. was much clearer. Yeah. Rook F4, there's no way out. Rook checks, but you're doesn't gonna, help. You're going to run out of checks, though, here, right? Yeah. Nowhere to go, right? No the extra queen doesn't help. Spurring the rook in the corner, yeah. Roger is not in the chat that I know of. In I'm assuming, Judith, you're referring to Roger She. I have not seen Roger in the chat. Uh, or that identifies him as Roger. So we still have this game from the uh, 12 and under section, the top board in the 12 and under. Uh, Carlos Varela, who is black. Looking good. 
Yeah, so Queen ahead is looking good. Yeah, Roger She have not seen Roger She in the chat. That I know of. So congrats, congrats there. And uh, Sean Kelly also got it done. Slow, cynical quip. Well, this is not looking good for White here. And I think all the- It's my learned opinion. You're learned. And that's, uh, yeah, all the games in the 16 and 18 are finished. Uh, Pretty much most of the games in the uh, in the one day sections are also done, and uh, there it is. So congrats, Carlos! Uh, two out of two now in the uh, twelve and under section. And uh, don't mess with me too is in the chat asking. I, I believe that's uh, Shashwath Siva Kumar. When is Over the Board planning to be uh, return? Uh, we are working on that. Uh, probably will not be till the summer live at the Mechanics Institute anyway. Um, and I'm sure you're referring to the Mechanics Institute because I know you're uh, Northern California. So uh, we're hoping uh, for the summer. Uh, we're trying to see if we can do uh, some smaller events, uh, but it, it won't be till the summer. Uh, the Mechanics Institute library barely opened up with very, very limited space. Uh, national Open, is, I mean, if you go to other parts of the country, Live Chess is opening. I mean, not just National Open in Vegas, but I mean, you can go to the Marshall Chess Club and um, go there play, but if you, uh, you're asking, I know you're from the Bay Area. Uh, it won't be till around the summer, but uh, definitely, I think I think a lot of the people from the Bay Area are going to the National Open in Vegas. Uh, so uh, that that's probably going to be the, the kickoff. It almost seems like the National Open is sort of the symbolic uh, Northern California reopening of chess, except it's not going to be in Northern California. It's going to be in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. Because I know a lot of a lot of Bay Area players are going to that. Is there a, is there like great deals on hotel rooms there? Uh, I don't know. Hey, Glenn, do you know uh, there has to be? <laughs> he said he's saying it's dangerous to go to Vegas. <laughs> uh, there's, there's, there's Always that, dangerous to go to Vegas. It, it, it was dangerous uh, two years ago to go to Vegas. <laughs> Five years ago. Uh, yeah. So uh, Glenn saying that. Uh, the deals are running now uh, for hotel. I mean, there has to be because there's not a lot of people, uh, uh, you know, as, as busy as Vegas is, uh, it's, it's going to be less regardless of what it would be under normal circumstances. So, uh, but I, I think a lot of people, like we had Kyron on the broadcast yesterday, he, he, he'd planned to be fully vaccinated by then. Uh, and I know a lot of the people going expect by that time to be vaccinated by the time they get there. So, uh, so that's what's going on with that. Okay, everyone, we will be back on the, uh, well, wait a minute. The casinos have done a great job limiting the capacity and plexiglass barriers. So it looks like the casinos themselves have a lot of uh, uh, precautions in place um, uh, to deal with that. Uh, do they also limit the amount of people inside a casino? I'd be curious for that also, but uh, we're going to take a little lunch break here. Uh, we should be back at uh, 1245, uh, 1 p.m. I'll be here at uh, 1245 and then uh, everyone else will join at around 1. Uh, or we may start at 1 actually because uh, National Master Arjun Bharat, he'll be joining us. He's from uh, the UC Berkeley chess team. He is one of the, I think he was board two on the uh, US Amateur Team West winning team, which was the UC Berkeley B team. Uh, he'll be hanging out with us, uh, helping cover uh, the rounds uh, when we get back. So 
All right, everyone, uh, 1 p.m., come back to us, twitch.tv slash mechanics chess. Uh, for the one-day sections, your next round's in uh, 45 minutes, I believe. And then uh, 9, yep, 45 minutes, I believe. So uh, good luck, everyone, and we will see you shortly. Uh, thanks for following.